RMJ Movie Reviews back again and now I'm coming with my next uh, happy Halloween movie review and I'm not really quite sure I could actually use the word happy in the same sentence as this movie because uh, oh my god let me see if I can get through this as best I can but this is my review of Halloween well, it's actually Halloween 666, The Origin of Michael's, uh, Michael Myers. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Either way, it's number 6 in the long-running franchise. franchise blah, blah, blah. It came out in September. I think it was 29th or 18th of 1995. I still vaguely remember the punishment that I endured by seeing this opening night. And... Uh, I was in 8th grade, I was 14 years old, um, oh, excuse me, no, 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 I was 13, this was like a week before my 14th birthday, me and my best friend and his brother, uh, we went to go see Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers at uh, an old mall called uh, Severance, Severance Center, that mall has since been torn down and it's something else that's now abandoned, digressing, uh, the crowd was sold out. Um, I had seen Halloween 5. Matter of fact, how I saw Halloween 5 was my older sister had rented it for, for me from the video store. And uh, I had watched it when Halloween 5 had first come on video, which I think was in 1990. Um, at the time, I really liked Halloween 5. I thought it was pretty good. Of course, like everybody else, I was like, who's the dude with the boots? What is going on with the ending? Why is he locked up in jail with his mask still on? All those stupid questions that they just didn't seem to care to answer. The filmmakers, that would be. So, of course, anybody who even remembered Halloween 5 or remembered Michael Myers, which was namely people like myself, probably general audiences didn't know, didn't care, didn't even honestly even know what number Halloween movie this was when this came out. Went to go see it opening night and... Um, I thought I was going to be, and I'm, and I'm not lying to y'all, this movie was sold out opening night. The whole house was packed. It was a noisy, rowdy crowd. You know, of course, nobody actually, you know, of course, you had a whole bunch of people who were there just to perform, you know, for, for their own purposes in the audience. But it, it was a packed house. Um... People were excited, they were high, they were drunk. I wasn't because I wasn't doing those things back in those days. And I thought I was in for a scare fest. When, when this movie opens with that, with that montage of flashing images and you can hear, Oh, Michael, Uncle Michael, please don't hurt me. I'm like, this is the next level of Halloween. This is about... And when you see that, that montage in a theater with the surround sound it looks pretty cool versus when you're watching it on tv now but it looked cool in the theater and i'm like this is the this is like halloween for the 90s this is badass and the movie's the movie's awful it sucks um it's very truncated now i know it's truncated because i've actually taken a video editing class I've taken script classes, I've taken acting classes, so I can actually see how awful it is now. And um, at the time when I saw it at 14, I gave it a pass because, you know, I was 14. I saw it. I didn't pay attention to those things. But even still, I could catch that there were things in the story that were kind of presented and dropped and scenes that didn't seem to make sense. They, they stick out more now than they did then. But uh, this is just... Really, the basic fact of this matter is knowing the behind-the-scenes drama that happened on this thing is that they, they basically they had a, a Halloween title, Halloween Five, Halloween Four was good. Halloween Five was just all over the place. They didn't really even know where to go. So instead of maybe attempting to, and, and here's the here's the thing about it. There was an attempt with the Halloween and Curse of Michael Myers, but then you got, you know, the movie studio saying one thing, and then, then the producers who own the rights to Halloween saying one thing, and then the director wanted to do one thing, and the writer saying one thing, and then pretty much, you know, I've done short films, I've done student films, and this stuff happens, man. You'll, you'll come up with an idea, and you'll say, this sounds good, and then some a-hole will jump in and say, I don't think we should do that. And literally, you will fight 
for hours. You 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 won't even get the damn movie made because you'll be too busy arguing with some a hole who when it's it's clearly simple when you're making films. And John Carpenter and Kurt Russell have said it on the commentary for Big Trouble in Little China. You choose an idea, and you everybody agrees we're gonna do this, and you do it. It's really that simple. When you get to arguing and bickering and being unprofessional, you don't get stuff done, and then you come up with movies like Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. You know, even if they would have just said, we're going to have a gore fest with Michael Myers, if they would have just took that route, okay, they would have took that route and it would have been cool. But, you know, it's like, we want it to be gory. But then we want it to be creepy like the original. But then uh, we want it to kind of be 90s and have kind of uh, hip grunge music. Uh, but then we want it to be flashy and cutting. They just did not know what the heck they were doing. Um, and, and to be perfectly honest, I don't even know if anybody really even cared aside from Mustafa Akkad. You know, he might have been the only one who actually cared. But I think he was kind of, you know, strong armed by Mayor Max and he just... Was, was left just kind of with his hands tied, you know, but, um, oh my God, there's tons of reshoots, uh, they try to use fancy editing to cover up the fact that they just pretty much said the hell with the story halfway through the movie, because the movie is setting up this whole thing about Michael Myers is cursed, and there's these, these modern day druids who are trying to get Jamie's baby for some sort of sacrifice to, I guess, turn... Uh, relatives of the Strode's grandson into the next Michael Myers for whatever reason that is. I don't know. It, it's never explained. There's just, they pretty much just threw everything in the kitchen sink, threw it into a blender and just said, I don't know what they said. They, they just threw something together and they threw fancy editing on top of it and good cinematography to try to mask the fact that this movie is a cluster F of epic proportions. It's it's awful. Um, the original ending with the doctors and the green stuff and the babies and the slaughtering with the blinking lights, that wasn't even the original ending. I've seen the producer's cut. I do own it. Um, as Daniel Ferris refers to it, the Temple of Doom ending. I actually do like that ending more. I'm not crazy about Michael Myers being the father of Jamie's baby. Again, I don't even know why they would even go that route. Why not just say, hey, she slept with somebody and it was an old boyfriend. Bam, leave it at that. That's the kid. Why they would make Michael Myers. I, I mean, it, it, it boggles my mind. These people who make movies, I can so tell that they do not care. It's simple, a title and a product for them. They're not creative people. They have no sense of, of, of loyalty to the fan base or the audience. They, they, they're just about like when you buy a candy bar from the dollar store or the dollar general. That's just some stuff that's thrown together for immediate gratification and consumption. That's what some of the folks are who create movies like this that have big name titles or big horror franchise titles. It's just about throw some stuff together, throw it out there. We'll make our quick little buck for our $2 million budget. And it, it doesn't even matter if the movie's good. We'll just throw it out there. People will spend their money and be satisfied. This Halloween Curse of Michael Myers is the only movie I've ever seen where an old, a whole audience booed. They booed at the end of this movie. And I'm not lying. I still remember... That is the first and only movie I've ever seen where the whole art, when the, when the titles popped up for Donald Pleasance, the whole room booed. The whole room booed, everybody. Everybody was like, just like the Princess Bride. Boo! Boo! That's what the whole room did, y'all. I'm dead serious on this. And people were crunching up their tickets and throwing them on the ground. People were pissed at the end of this movie. You know? And... Ah, uh, man, it, it, it's just really disgusting what happened with this movie. I mean, I give you a prime example how they try to use the editing. Uh, okay, I, I'll go over this point real quick. There's a point in the movie where Tommy finds Jamie's baby at the bus station. Not to mention the cleaning crew didn't clean up, clean up the blood in the telephone booth, but whatever. I guess the cleaning crew was just off that day. 
So um, he finds the baby in the thing. Yeah, they didn't clean the bathroom either because the kid was in there all night with customers uh, in the bus station. So whatever. Tommy finds the baby. He goes to the hospital to drop the kid off. Then he all of a sudden changes his mind when he sees Dr. Loomis. He wants Dr. Loomis to help because Dr. Loomis saved him from Michael Myers in the first movie, okay? But he just decides security is coming. He's not going to hook up with Dr. Loomis to try to explain the whole thing. He decides to run off with the kid. Why? I don't know. It's retarded. Dr. Loomis does not know that Bami, Jamie has been kidnapped by this ancient druid, creepy people, whoever they are, Rosemary Baby people. But, magically, Tommy is explaining the whole thing, how he knows about the whole uh, plan. I, I guess because he studies druid stuff in his spare time. I don't know. I'm just agitated, you know. But, you know, Dr. Loomis looks at the baby and goes, she is the last in his bloodline. And then Tommy goes, no, 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 no. There's relatives of Lori that live across the street. Uh, Lori's uncle, who or whoever the hell they are, Michael's going to go for them. How they know this, I don't know. I guess it's just because they're just trying to explain to the audience. This that that's That's their way of saying to the audience, this movie makes no sense. So we have to explain away everything like that. Um... So, um, you know, after that happens, well, long story short, what, you, what I found out is once I w went back and watched the producer's cut is that Dr. Loomis is not actually talking about the baby. The scene was trimmed and cut and edited in such a way as that they created their own scene or that they tried to make it appear that Dr. Loomis was talking about the baby Tommy was holding, but he really wasn't. He was actually referring to Jamie because Jamie wasn't killed earlier in the movie. She didn't die until later in the movie, and she wasn't killed by Michael. She was shot in the head by the man in black, Dr. Wynn. Oh, my God. I mean, there's really good scenes in the producer's cut that explain things a little bit better. Don't get me wrong. It's still a crap movie, but I, I, I think... If they left the producers cut the way it was, because that's exactly what it is. It's 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 a working a work print, you know. So it it was meant to be nipped and tucked anyway. So instead of adding to the producers cut the work print and kind of beefing up things, they they just started chopping and cutting things and taking out character scenes and they took out a lot of cool stuff with with Donald Pleasance and they took out a lot of cool stuff with Michael Myers lurking in hallways and in backgrounds. I mean, there's, there's some really cool stuff of him walking through these tunnels with the POVs that kind of seem like uh, Dean Cundy's cinematography or stuff from the first or second film. Why they took it out, I do not know. I mean, what they did with this movie was just, I mean, retarded. I mean, I mean and the way they reshot it, the reshoots make no sense to what the story that was laid out in the producer's cut. The producer's cut is still absurd, and it's got, as Daniel Ferris calls it, the Temple of Doom ending, and Dr. Wynn with the hood on, and there's flashing lightning. It's all absurd. It's all ridiculous. But hey, if they would have went that route and stuck with it, I, it would have been cool. All they had to do was add in the musical, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the flashy little quick cuts. They could have added that in beefed up the music a little bit, beefed up some of the chase scenes, made the kills. The kills in this thing are so boring, except for the chick getting the spike through the head and then um, the father being electrocuted, which I do like that reshoot because the version in the producer's cut where his hair turns white is just like, really? You guys thought that would be enough for an audience? I mean, when his head explodes with the Alka-Seltzer, uh, granted, it's absurd, but what the, it's number six. What else could they do? Um... I, I'm just at a loss. I mean, I, I don't know what else to explain. I guess the only thing I can say that's really good about this movie is, I will say the cinematography. The cinematography and and uh, not the way the scenes were edited, uh, meaning the way edited in terms of the story is paced throughout the movie. But in terms of literally the way just the scenes are edited, the way they stop and end and all of that, and like Tommy beating Michael with the pipe, and it, the way that's cut, I'm very, very slickly cut, very polished. I love the cinematography of the really cold blues. It, it really feels like autumn and cold and the leaves. And some of the camera work is very well done. 
and I like some of the stuff where like the scene before Michael kills the mom and uh, you see like she picks up the phone and she's here in the foreground and you see him in the background. Cool stuff. Really cool stuff. But aside from the cinematography, the camera work and some of the editing, this thing's a total disaster. It's a total disaster. It's it's such a unceremonious, disrespectful, just slap across the face to the fans. It, it's it's really honestly so awful that it makes you wish you could go back and watch Halloween Five, and that is really bad. You know that's that's horrible. You know um, I would have liked if. I don't know, man. Halloween Five was such a cluster f that I, I don't. I really just think they had nowhere else to go. They were stuck with their hands tied, so they just threw caution to the wind, said the heck with it. And I and also too, listening to the pirate commentary by Daniel Ferens, you know, the director was more interested in in kind of uh, getting a, a three picture deal with Merrimax, I think. So he didn't care about the series. He didn't care about any loyalty to the fan. He didn't care about making a horror picture. He was just trying to forward his career. Now, my idea would be, like, okay, if they asked me to do, like, uh, a movie about football, I'm not the most biggest sports fan in the world, but I tell you what I would do. I would do all my research in the world. I would try to see what the fans like. I would try to keep, I would try to bring my own little touch to it, but make the most... Uh, satisfying thing that I could within within my parameters. Nobody cared on this thing. Nobody. I think Donald Pleasant cared. He cared. You know, he was loyal to this series, and I think Mustafa Akkad cared. But outside of those two, I mean, this was a pure monetary thing for everybody else involved. And this movie's just, oh, it's it's just really bad. It's just really, really, really bad. Uh, oh God, I, I kind of I lost track of what I was saying. This, this this movie's terrible, man. It's just terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. The cinematography is about the only good thing about it. Um, I don't even really know what else to say. I mean, it's it's bad. It's just bad. The, the, the only thing that's probably maybe even much worse than this would probably be Halloween Resurrection. And they're about neck and neck and how awful they are. Matter of fact, Halloween Resurrection and Curse of Michael Myers are actually so awful. I can sit up here and tell you all with a straight face that I'd rather watch Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 than Curse of Michael Myers or Halloween Resurrection. I, I mean, that, that's... Ugh. I can say that with a straight face. Seriously. And I'm not even saying that that movie's good because it's not. I think it's awful. But my God, at least Rob Zombie... Made a choice and he went with it. He went with this is just gonna be just batshit crazy, and he went with it. You know, all ugh. I just ugh, look at these people. I had to lean back in my chair. I don't have anything else to say about Halloween Six: The Curse of Michael Myers. Um, what else good can I say about it? It's Paul Rudd's first movie, um, and apparently he was he hated it too. You know, he was really disappointed by it. Matter of fact, that whole ending with the doctors and the chop up and him smiling and laughing at Michael and getting care out the thing. He was the he was shooting that while he was making clueless. He didn't even want to be there. You know, so it's it's uh, um I like the marketing for the movie when it came out. All the trailers are really cool. Michael Myers' mask looks cool. I like his his outfits gray in this one as opposed to dark blue or black. Um, I don't know what else to say about this movie. It's awful. I've literally worn myself out. Ugh. RMJ movie reviews. Um... That's it for this awful thing. Please, y'all, thumbs up my video. Uh, you all muster up some comments you can about Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, and anybody else out there who's a fanboy of the Halloween series who was devastated by this piece of garbage when they first saw it. Uh, I'd like to hear from people who actually saw it at the theater when it came out. Um...
I I just don't have anything else to say. Uh, I'll be back with my review of I don't even know. I'm just too tired. RMJ Movie Review. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment. Thumbs up below. I'll see you soon.